I'll just crouch, as usual. <laughs> hey, Amy! <laughs> hey, Taylor! What is that? Laser chess! Oh, what are we gonna do with laser chess? Not play chess. No. We're gonna play with lasers. I mean, even if we were trying to play chess, we would play it with laser chess. But we could play laser chess with laser chess. I mean, we could try <clears throat> later, but I just no, want to play with no, lasers. No, I don't care about laser chess. Um, we're going to need eye protection. Oh, I can't. Let's see. <laughs> you see the laser on my hand? Absolutely. Camera? I can't um, see. <clears throat> I can't see a thing. I can't see it all. Yeah, surely, I don't think you're supposed to play laser chess with eye protection, so I think it's probably not the scariest lasers. No, it's got the laser warning on it. I mean, don't shine it in your eye. The nice thing about laser chess is that it comes with all these little mirrors we can play with. Well, and it's for ages 8 to 108. Just made it. That's so specific. Okay. All right. <clears throat> hmm. We're going to perform the slit lamp experiment of quantum mechanics fame. Yes. Yes, it's going to work. Okay. Gotcha. Step one, get a microscope slide. Step two, light a candle. Oh. Your candle of science does not have to be the tombstone of Victorian child, but it can be. <laughs> Step three, hold the microscope slide over the candle. Nice. We are covering a portion of the slide with what is I think, importantly, a thin layer. <laughs> Commonly known as soot, although <clears throat> in the Victorian era they did call it candle black. And now we've blackened this part of the slide. We may now blow out the candle. Or, if you're really cool, you do that. Let me blow it with the fan. Now, in our candle black, we need to make a slit. I'm going to use the blade from an X-Acto knife and make a single slit. It's wavy because I'm not a incredibly sure-handed. On the other <clears throat> side, using two X-Acto knife blades, I'm going to make a double slit. Slit and double slit. All right. Now I will uh, mount this <laughs> and the camera needs to come with me. There we go. Um, and that's our setup. Booyah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Woo. That's the single slit. Okay. That's just one big schmeary line. I'm doing it. I don't know if we're catching it. We will know. Oh gosh. When we check the video. But I think it's catching it. It looks real good in person. I'm delighted. Double slit interference. But, okay. We should see it in here. You can. It's, it's, oh. it's faint. Okay. Like, hang on. Do you see it? Because it's bounced should we, around. We should also see it in there. Yeah. 
Yep. Because it's here, splits, here, some goes to here, goes to here, this okay, goes to here. So goes to what here. we did okay. was can you see? There are there are laser chess pieces that are thin and have a mirror on both sides. We wanted a beam splitter, so we took two of those. Right here, I guess I'll let me turn the lights on for this part, maybe. <laughs> and took the mirrors out yeah. and put microscope slides in there. So glass, which works awesome, will allow us to half the light will go through to this mirror. The other half will bounce to this mirror. So we split the beam here, and then theoretically we're bringing it back together here. But it's also going to split, the, like, so both of these detectors can see it. The thing is, and by I, detectors I mean kings. I want to right because it's just <laughs> the kings. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. um, if we knew the rules, I'm going to. I want to see these lasers, so I'm going to add a little fog to the desk area. Um, so just hold up, hold, stand by for that. Stand by. Okay. So we have our cool laser beam set up, and we're waiting on the fog machine. Yeah, and we're in eye protection. Uh, I'm just gonna. So we'll see. <laughs> Fine. So as soon as the fog machine fogs, you have to hit the laser button. Fog machine heat up and hold it down. God, dang it, now I have to wait for it to give birth again. No, I can't but it's breathe. still foggy. It's still working. I can't see oh, anything. It's because you have goggles? No? I can see it perfectly right here. That one, oh. and then it gets from the, um. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. But we've lost it. Yeah, then it trails off. I can't believe it. Okay, wait, what about, can you see it now? It's still so foggy. That's good, that's good, I can see that. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, our, hang on, what are we doing this with lights on for? Oh, right, we need to be in the dark. Okay, the fog machine will give birth again here in a second. <laughs> yeah, we forgot to turn the lights out. That's all it has. Oh, and, and the additional light off. Oh yeah. Can the camera see it? Like especially where it comes right out of the laser. Like that right there. That that is Oh yeah. And our beam splitter is working. Mm -hmm. It's just really faint on the reflected part. Science baby. Okay. I can see the laser beam. There's the laser. <clears throat> There's the splitter, aka a slide we jammed into where the mirror should have been. There's a mirror. <clears throat> it looks really cool from like down here, which is probably where you are. It scares me every time. It scares me the first time. Oh, it looks really cool on the camera. The camera nice. sees it better than my eye does. Ah! Oh my god, it's so strong! <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of fog. We can't really breathe. Okay, I'm turning it off. It's very foggy. We'll be back when it's less foggy. Oh, I hope it doesn't. Will it shut the smoke alarm? So the fog is cleared. And I hope it's so <laughs> I'm gonna get delirious. Okay. We would like to talk about <clears throat> what we did. So the first thing that we did was the double slit 
experiment, mm -hmm. which I tend to call the slit lamp experiment. That is not the correct name of it, and I apologize. So, when you send light through a single slit, you get on the screen a <clears throat> single slit. Up and down. When you send it through two, you don't get two slits because, because light is a particle and a wave. Also a wave. So, okay. <laughs> so they knew that light was made <clears throat> up of photons, right? Mm -hmm. They knew that light was particles. And the double slit kind of blew people's minds because it showed that light has to be a wave because when when it goes to the double slit, you've got you know light has wavelengths and when two peaks hit each other, you get a double peak and when two troughs hit each other, you get a double trough and when a trough and a peak hit each other, they cancel out, Zero. which is why you've got <clears throat> dark right, spots. Yeah, the dark spots in there. Um, and particles don't have a way of doing that. There's not a way to explain that with just a particle model. And you get that same interference pattern if you have equipment that would let you, unlike a laser that's just going to shoot out a whole bunch of photons at the center, you can put the photons through one at a time and they will still do that. Which is Because it's fundamentally crazy. a wave and a particle. So this was a classic experiment in, what, the 30s maybe? Yeah. Where I think that's probably true. <laughs> they were they were figuring out quantum mechanics. Um, this one, I didn't set it up quite right. I realized that I had this guy instead of a mirror here. Anyway, the lasers never we split them nicely, but they never came back together. But it was really fun. It um, was really fun. I don't even. It looked really. It cool. was really. I fun. had a blast. I would <laughs> like so much fun. I need a way to make less. Fog. Oh no. And maybe quieter fog. No, it was perfect. <laughs> but I have to say, <laughs> so the laser chess board with all of its mirrors and its lasers made s playing with this, setting it up, really easy it and was fun. Shockingly apt and appropriate. I mean, the fact that we just went to like an educational store and just found this. Or uh, t Taylor knew that it was a thing you could buy, but it was just like setting out. I mean, and we're like, oh, I mean, you can, I, I can see there's a lot of fun to be had with this, potentially. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the quantum mechanics experiment that we were trying to replicate that did not happen, because we did not, I, mm, basically you, you split the beam into two, and then you bring them back together. Right. And when you do that, they always go to the left or something. Then you block one side, and now they go to both left and right. And then you unblock it, and they only go to the left. Get like, <clears throat> how how does this one know that you right. blocked this one? Like, um, how does that information? Because because so so much of well, uh, it, how does information travel and information loss is a huge part of um, even quantum mechanics. Oh yeah, well because that was Einstein's whole problem with it was like for particles that are, <clears throat> um, what is the word? Intertwined is not it. <laughs> um, it starts with an I. Particles that are... And it's not interlaced. Entangled! It's not even... It starts with an E. It's me. <laughs> yeah, particles that are entangled... It is not the case that they are either, you know, one is spinning up and one is spinning down and we just don't know which is which. They are in that superposition of states and then you spread them out and you figure out one and, and that... Automatically makes the other one. Yeah, I mean that's the whole Bell's inequality. Well, I mean, Bell's inequality meaning that theoretic that means information could, is traveling faster than light, which Einstein called spooky action in a distance. Spooky action in a distance. Because if this, if you measure this and it's spin up, this one has to be spin down, and it doesn't matter if this one is on Alpha Centauri, millions and millions and millions of miles away. And whereas if information then seems to have instantaneously traveled and, and potentially faster than light, depending on how your setup is. And it's that, that, that that's the spooky, that spooky actions at a distance. How did that happen? And, and Einstein coined that term because he was <clears throat> criticizing it. He was showing yeah. it. So the Copenhagen interpretation solved that by saying, 
consciousness creates reality. Right. If you like, it's when you measure it, observation determines mm -hmm. reality. The cat is now dead. The mini worlds mm -hmm. hypothesis states that when you measure it and it's up, another you measured it and it was down. Yeah. So it's it both are both absolutely happen in two different timelines, but, and that there's just this infinity <clears throat> of infinities of worlds. But anytime there's a decision or a thing that could be one or the other a new universe mm -hmm. is created for that um there's a lot of a lot of room star trek ran with that mm -hmm. especially in discovery yeah although mm -hmm. the original did the one episode but um with mirror universes I know. yeah so um terrans good times but so yeah. A recent a book that we are reading that I have finished and that Amy's working on mm -hmm. is Helgoland by Rovelli, and it posits a different interpretation of quantum mechanics that avoids sort of the pitfalls of, for me, it's like Occam's Razor pitfalls of either the Copenhagen interpretation or the Many Worlds hypothesis um, interpretation. Because you're always going to run up against something that seems just bananas. Yeah. Um, and his book definitely made me feel sane. And his book recounted these early fundamental quantum mechanics experiments. And that's why I wanted to play with the lasers, because I wanted to try to replicate them. And we did replicate the dual slit. We did not quite replicate the, um, the dual pathways. But, but again, the lasers looked really, really cool. fun. Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.